We made an Android application called Zero Player for our Capstone. Um, I'm Ron. This is Mason. I'm Mason. I'm Mason here too. So it's, uh, we designed, keep this in mind for future reference, we designed and developed everything you see on the screen. Everything you see is created from scratch. So. And questions are welcome at any time, so don't be hesitant to just wait till the end. So, yeah. So about us. First, first question. You posed for that just for this presentation, right? I bought a turtle neck just for this presentation. <laughs> 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 A little bit about myself. Uh, I, I, I've always felt like I wanted to create something, not just work for some company doing, you know, boring work all the time. I felt like I wanted to get my own vision out there and not have to be controlled by people. So you know, I wanted to take up this app as our capstone project because it's a good stepping stone to that point. You know, so I felt like it was a really good idea for us. So. I recognize this pose. This is the Steve Jobs pose. Yeah, yeah that's what we were going for. But... Probably, uh, I always enjoy programming. Uh, or I always enjoyed computers and video games, but I never really was into programming when I was younger. But once I started studying it, it was like, like I almost found what I wanted to do. So, and I was always big on design, but I couldn't really find a way to channel it. So that's why he said at the beginning, everything's designed from scratch. All this is designed from our ideas. So. So the drive behind this media player was pretty much to make something simple. Most media players nowadays, like you can see, you have all these options. There's tons of features that, I mean, that are beneficial, but how many of these things can you actually use while you're driving or running at the times that you normally listen to music? Most of the time you're not gonna be able to really use those options like that. Which is why we've created a, a simple way to listen to the music. <laughs> so you're not doing this. Yeah. Basically. Not good. Driving, yeah. driving, texting, <laughs> listening to music, doing it travel. So go ahead and move the next one. So which is why uh, <laughs> we've we've created a simple way to uh, listen to music with the same experience uh, without any of the distractions. We 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 just. Uh, we, we design ways around that so you can still do what you want to do, but it's not going to impede on your safety or anything like that. And drivers are normally familiar with their cars and listening to music with their CD players with the knob-button combination. And that's designed for so you don't have to look at it. You can turn volume on, off, without actually looking at the knob. So that's kind of what we were going for with this media player. Uh, yeah, that's what we were going for with this media player. We designed with simplicity in mind. Uh, like I said, we use the large buttons. It's it's designed in a way that feels natural to the user. It's going to be located on parts of the phone where you're going to be comfortable with it, no matter what phone you're on. It's it's going to be. Easy to use, so you're not going to have to look at the screen to actually control it, and everything is going to feel completely natural to anybody, even beginner users to follow. So, just so, kill me with these transitions, man. <laughs> well, as you can see here, this is the actual app. It's live on the TV. So this is the uh, the home screen. So, uh, do you want there? What is the right angle? 
Okay, I'll see you right here. Thank you. So this is a list view of all the songs on our phone right now. So every song that you're seeing here, uh, it takes in all the information, all of the artist names, uh, or in the song names, all the titles and everything like that. If you click on one of the songs... Where does it pull the, the songs from? So, but that, that's, we'll get into the specifics on that later, but right now, as far as it goes, it pulls all of the information from wherever the files are located in your phone. So it just, it looks for every file in your phone that has the extension of music or video. So even Spotify or... It, unless it has to be downloaded onto your phone, so it, you can't, it has no streaming capabilities or anything like that. So go ahead and click on a song so we can kind of show it. So when you click on a, on a song, it's going to go to your now playing screen. The now playing screen, it's going to feature album art. This is the default uh, when there's no uh, album art on the song itself, it's going to have the regular player blank. It's going to show the song name, the artist name, and then it's going to it's going to show the song name here, the artist name, and the album. So it's going to show every all the information you want to see for it, and it's going to display it in a way. So talk about the buttons. Like so as you can see, it's very simple. Everything that's that's placed on the phone is placed in a general spot. So you got the play pause button at the bottom. It's easy. There's no <coughs> pointing where. Things are complicated displays or options that you have on the screen. Every button was made from scratch at a high resolution and resized to retain. It retains the quality visually on the phone screen without uh, hindering the performance. Because when it comes to a UI, there's a certain amount of memory that is put aside for UI functions. So compressing the buttons and other background picture files and stuff like that is really important. So this this is a little bit of the code that goes into it. Keep in mind that the entire application itself is around 2,000 lines of code. So we've, we've written every single bit of here by hand and got it all done. So this, this specifically, this refers to your question and so on how exactly it gets the music and displays it on your phone. So it's it's gonna take it's gonna take all the files, it's gonna use this uh, it's gonna use this resolver here, the content resolver, to uh, basically set up an access point, uh, an access way to actually talk to um, the content provider, which a content provider it's basically a database that it creates within the phone to take care of all the file extensions and the file types. So what it's going to do is it's going to um, it's going to open that access point. It's going to communicate with it. This line right here, it's going to tell it to not show any notification sounds, no ringtones. So it's not going to show any of that. It's going to put it into alphabetical order, and it's going to put the file path here. The file path is just another media store. Yes. Um. How much memory would this take in your phone? How much memory? We we've it's it's only going to take what like as far as, far as like RAM or the app size. Yeah, much, yeah. How big is the app? Yeah. Yeah. When when the, the app is it, running, it's using about I think 14 megabytes. Of, so. The actual app size is about 51 megabytes. Yeah. So it's not it's not very big. I have a question. How will you initiate the app to work at the phone standards? I mean, if you are driving, that's why you have live buttons. Mm -hmm. How do you initiate it? Do you give voice command, or you still have to cite through the algebra school order to get your music played? Um. So, so say that again. So, how do you? Get to <laughs> how do you initiate? Like now, assuming if I have the app on my phone, mm -hmm. right, and I'm driving, I just remember. Okay, let me just use this app to listen to my music. Mm -hmm. So, how do I initiate it? Do I give it a voice command, or do I still have to press the play button or select the actors? Yeah, yeah, so, how does she launch the app? Yeah. Yeah. Launch it, yeah. You you <laughs> launch it just like any other app, but uh, there's. A feature we're going to get to that. Yeah, there, the there's a special slides. feature we, we're saving for a little bit later. But, but yeah, <laughs> but basically the the general concept is uh, you're still going to open the app the same way you do with anything else. You're going to click on a song, but then as far as when you're driving, things are going to change up a little bit at that point. So 
Yeah, I'll just continue on with this a little bit. I mean, I know it all looks like gibberish to you guys, so I mean, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so it's just gonna get the file path, it's gonna list all those items, and it's gonna build a list of every song and every, or video, perhaps, because it also plays videos. And so it's gonna build all that and just place it into a list that it can communicate to whenever it wants to. So go ahead and move it to the next slide. Uh, this is, uh, it's, it's another part of how, to, how it gets the song information. So it, it sends it through this adapter and it, and it basically, it sends all the information through one of our classes into, into this. So it can display the song names and artist names into a text on the screen that you can see. Otherwise, it's just random data to everybody. Nobody's going to see what it means, you know? Is this Java? Yeah, this is Java. So it's, it, this, this allows it here. This whole thing is just to be able to allow it to display on the screen in the list view so you guys can see everything. So go ahead with that. Next one. Uh, this is for the now playing screen. This is basically the same kind of code that you've seen last two slides. Uh, it's, the only difference is that it's going to show the album art. It's going to use a bitmap image rather than a drawable because it saves on memory, it saves on space, and, it's, and it makes it a lot faster for performance. So we use the bitmap, so we, it takes the path for the album art and it just places it and it uses the file path that the song displays. So. Um, this is the, I would call it the mo most important part of the entire code because everything is running off of media store. Uh, we have that content resolver, which I described. It's going to open the access point to that content provider, so you can it can actually communicate with the internal database, and it's going to set the path of of where the songs are located, and it's going to move a cursor to that position. Basically, it's going to create a list of every file in your phone, and it's going to move to that position in the list to get that specific file path and those names and everything that you want to see. Uh, just to add on to what he's saying, Media Store is pretty much like the internal media, kind of like a program inside of the phone that it reads song files, videos, so it's, it's working off of internal stuff that's already in your phone, so you're not losing any type of performance or anything like that. Everything that plays on your phone the way it plays now, it's going to play just like it does on this. Exactly. You can describe this one. Is that the next one? Yeah. Right. So with this, what? Almost like the first screen. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine, director. I want to keep going. Keep going. There you go. There we go. You can go ahead and describe this one. This is with the list I can click. So you can click on that item in the list. All right. So with this. As you, as you can see, the same thing with the media store. But uh, for this, it's the it's the uh, the list selector. So pretty much, it come, it puts out the song count and uh, so basically, what's happening here is you're gonna click on a song in the list. It's gonna take all that information and it's gonna send. Uh, the path in the, in the file name to our different activity the now play screen so it can, it can still play the same song that you clicked on because it's one of the issues before that we ran into is when we didn't set that position or the song count is uh, when when you click on a song it's going to start the first song in the playlist which is stupid so we don't want that of course we had to we had to set it to do that so basically saying it shuffles it Mm -hmm. well, well, what the issue was, you click on a song and want to play that song, and so we had to fix that. Right, and, song. Yeah, exactly. So what fixed that was <laughs> setting the position to what you click on in the list, and it's sending that information. Think back when we talked about arrays and how arrays start at a certain place, but he needs to know where in the array the yeah, song exactly, is. Exactly. And actually, before too, it was sent to where the list that displayed on the screen wasn't actually the list that the phone was bringing up for the songs. So it was like behind that list, 
was actually the songs that the, the media player had, and it would take all the metadata from all the songs and just display it on the screen. So it was kind of like two lists, yeah, conflicting with each other. But this is the uh, this is when I told you that there was another feature that we had. This is the GPS locator. So the app is designed so when you this right here is 4.5. What is that meters per second? Which is <coughs> what 15 miles an hour? Yeah, it's 10 miles an hour or 10 miles an hour. So so when you hit hit that speed, it'll go into a safe mode. Which, if it doesn't, currently with the GPS locator, it's, uh, it has trouble reaching into the building to actually display it. So what we did is we took a video of it in action, if you guys would want to see that. Yeah. So what happens is, do you want to describe the GPS? Yeah. So what happens, if you hit the speed, it either knows you're driving, so it'll change the screen and... It's not displayed. Guys, dude, yeah. Hey, do uh, uh, what? There you go. Okay. Yeah. So we recorded a video because we can't demonstrate it here because there's no GPS signal in the building. But so this is the song actually playing. And then when, as and drive, when you hit that speed, this is the drive safe mode, so. You can no longer control the buttons. You can, but the way it's designed, you don't have to look at the screen. Because each button is a quadrant of the screen. So the volume <laughs> down will take this whole section. Okay. So if you hit anywhere within the bottom section of the phone, you can turn the volume down. Oh, okay. and this entire quadrant here skips the song. This one goes back. This center part is pause play. That's volume up. Got it. So, and it's basically taking something that you're comfortable <laughs> with, your phone, physically, and putting it in general areas so you know exactly where the top of your phone is, the bottom of the phone the screen is. But if you want us to select a different song, you and shouldn't be doing that while you're driving, should you? Oh, you and that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we were trying to go for this. You shouldn't really be taking, you're able to play music with the least amount of distraction. So if you have your playlist set, you're playing it, whatever, maybe if you want to adjust the volume, you can grab that, click it, turn it down. Oh, tell them about the, like the, tell them the next, like, tell them about the next and, and, and last what, buttons. What, what basically also, if you want to change your song, is there's a feature, go ahead and continue via video, is that when you want So when you hit it back, you get this. Yeah. Oh, okay. You, you're, you're asked if you want to exit it. If you want to exit it, GPS is turned off for you. You don't have to turn it on anymore. It just allows you to go back to that now blank screen. Mm -hmm. so what happens when your phone rings? Cool, What's that? What happens mm -hmm. when your phone rings? Well, it just rings and it's song playing. Same as any time. Yeah, same thing. It's and that, and that's it's over, over the, over, the over, video. Over, over, and yeah. that's, that's the thing. We can't completely dictate what you do while you're driving. Like, it's kind of like up to you. It's the law. This is a, <laughs> a, a safer way to, to allow you to play music. You still got it. I like yeah. that. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> so it'll ask you this, you hit yes, and it'll take you right back to the And you'll notice there's a forward and back, you know, where you can skip to the next song or, or go back to the previous song. So you have some control over songs. You just can't go to the playlist and be it's looking song. for yeah. songs. Which, so if I'm playing it from the back seat, then it's okay if I'm driving. Right. Yeah. There you go. Assuming I'm not driving from the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> those, of you, those of you who are familiar with the ways app for yeah. for they, they do the same thing they say if you're a passenger then you can exit the that mode so basically what we want to keep in mind is that Just not every time that you're moving 10 miles powerpoint an hour, you're on the, driving your car yeah, yeah. you know just so click on the why would we have it set to do that and then go oh i got it you know you yeah. all right so so yeah. basically yeah with this code like it says here if Wow. Anyways, if it's active, or if, if, yeah, if the if GPS is active, the GPS is active, the screen will activate, and it will only activate once, because we had an issue where it would continue to activate, 
it would read at that speed and it would say, okay, you're going 15 miles an hour in your safe mode. And then it would, if it's still at 15 miles per hour, it would just keep bang, bang, safe mode, safe mode. And, you, and it wouldn't, you basically were locked out of your phone because it would just keep popping. It wouldn't turn off. So you set this, we set this to true. So once it's true, it won't activate anymore. Yeah, the way it, the way it works is it's uh, it's initialized in the on creation of the class, right? So it's it's going to be initialized to false. So when once it hits this 4.5, it switches over to true, and it, it turns all of this off. So this can't be used anymore. So it doesn't keep bringing it up anymore. <clears throat> That's. Uh, something we actually just figured out last night. We were up until 4.30 a.m. just trying to power through everything. So, which is why we're late a little bit. So, I mean, <laughs> so basically what that's doing, it's uh, we're having a lot of performance issues because what our app is also doing is every time you play a song, it's gonna upload all of that information for the song onto a database that we've created onto our teacher server. So it uploads the song name, the artist name, the album name, and how many times it's been played for every device onto a database that we've, we've created. And this sets the database into a background thread. So everything you see on your phone, it's gonna be running in the foreground so you can still control it, right? But but this database, since it's not interacting with anything, it's gonna be running in the background. So it, you're not, it's not gonna take any performance hits. You're still gonna be able to access what you wanna do and change your songs, and it's gonna be instantaneous still. And what was happening is we were playing a song, it would take 15 or 20 seconds to actually load the song because I was doing all this database code. <coughs> so, And the way, uh, so the separate thread, generally you want to put everything that you can't see on the background thread. So it's almost like, say you have a processor with two cores. Whatever's on the first thread is running on one core and then the background thread is running on another core. That's an example. You can set it to work that way, but that's there's just an the, you can go into a lot of depth on how you want all this to be controlled. So you can take components of whatever application and you can separate it between cores and so to optimize exactly how you want it to run. So we took the database portion and put it on there because that's the database portion and the GPS are the most performance. Uh, to take the most, yeah, the most performance for the app. So, um, yes. Okay. So you have to be in GPS mode in order for the app to work. No, no, no. The G, you can turn the GPS off, and it just won't put the safe mode on. But the GPS has to be on for the safe mode to activate. Okay. Gotcha. And uh, let's see. We also have before we go get into the database, I'll, we should. Describe the videos, for example. The videos, yeah, yeah. The videos, um, they work basically the same way as songs. They get the information the same exact way by um, by reaching that media store and then getting all the files. So, go ahead and display a list of your videos here. So this is all the list of every video that's in his entire phone right here. And if you click on one, it's going to take all of that information, the file path and everything from that video and it's going to play it. Don't click on the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, it, it says this is Christmas. I don't know how I clicked that. But yeah, so. <laughs> but what's cool about this is uh, it basically has the same capabilities as VLC player, for example. It can play all file types, MKB, uh, WMV, WMA. So it plays every file type, every movie that you want to play. You can do it just fine. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and the same goes with songs. Songs can play every audio type that you want to play in 4A by MP3, MP4, or MP4, but uh, everything that you want to play with the audio as well. Okay. <laughs> so, My little brother sent me that. He's a good dude. All right, so I'm going to go into a little bit of the database. Did you want to jump into the database, or did you want to? Uh, I'm, my volunteers, I'm going to need to see you guys real quick. So he'll talk about the database yeah. while I talk to my volunteers. Yeah, so he's going to talk to volunteers, uh, get all everything set up. So what's happening is when you enter the now playing screen after you click on a song, it's going to it's going to connect to our, our database on his server, and it's going to read every song, every artist, and every album that's on that database, right? So it's going to read everything there, and then when you play a song, it's 
while it's showing all its data that it needs to show, so you can access the app just fine. It's going to start running that background thread, and then it's going to write all that information to the database in the back. So everything you see, it's going to be uploaded, and you can view it whenever you'd like. So it's going to be uploaded to the database. And then on top of that, after it's uploaded to the database, it actually uploads the information to the website that we've also created. So we have a website that you can actually go on to right now called zeroplayer.com. And you can go to ZStats, and it will display all the information of every song that's in play. And how many times it's in play, yes? How much they have cost. Yeah. It's free. Okay. <laughs> 59.99. <laughs> Cash. Cash how, how much you want to pay for it? How much would I pay for it? If, it, if it's that it simple, this. If, it, if it's that simple, yeah. I would download it because because I, I would I would it, it's it's user friendly. You're gonna love the website, up it's, it's very user friendly and it, and and it's very simple to use. I mean, it, it's it's just it takes a lot of a lot of just, oh, well, all the distractions away as far as me controlling my music in my in my. The reality is you know where the top and bottom of yeah. your phone is and yeah. where the right and yeah. left of it yeah. is. And yeah. if that's... No. Do, it, do it have an interface where you can plug your phone in into your car and still do the same thing? Uh, as that's, far as... That, that's, uh, that's another thing that has to be coded in as well, which you wouldn't expect, but it's it's something that we okay. definitely look forward to implementing in okay. the future. That's V2. Yeah. Remember, yeah, another thing 10 you, weeks. Right. Keep in mind, this, <laughs> this is almost a fraction of what it's actually going to be when we put it on the app store yeah because there's there's a lot of oh, yeah. performance issues that, that we're going to have to tweak and stuff like that to make it for all phone devices eventually yeah, yeah eventually right. iphone but i mean the way iPhone works is every song is run through itunes so it's kind of it makes things kind of difficult and it's like almost useless in a way because we would have to restructure the entire app yeah. pretty much. It would be like making a whole new app. Okay. So, so okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Android, Android's first could be an iPhone. All right, guys, moving along. That's what they're talking about. So let's, let's just show them, because like we were saying, it uploads all that information. Do you want to show them that later, or do you want to just show them? Yeah, explain this. All right. Yeah, he did. So... <laughs> So, so yeah. this is our live website. It's actually live. You could go on this website on your phone, and it'll be on there. Awesome. So, can you download the app from your? No, no, no not the, the plan. The plan is go ahead and click on it. Yeah. So, I need. I'm gonna hold on. So this is. Wow. Hey, hit hit the Windows P button. You said Windows P. Yeah. Windows P, Windows P. and say duplicate. There you go. So this is our website, zeroplayer.com, oh. and there's just a little description of kind of what it is. It's simple save. Just examples of what it looks like. So the the website was designed from scratch. Yeah. That that was his work here. My blinds You tell him about how you completely made this website. There's a spot on his site where you can leave comments. So. Oh yeah. So <laughs> so as you can see, the, the the app, the site, the PowerPoint. We try to keep the theme pretty much the same. So the font, everything. So everything was pretty much made from scratch. Um, I use Dreamweaver to make the site, and a lot of the the CSS was uh, pretty much made from scratch. So yeah, yeah. These are just some images. Uh, we have a, a sign-in section. So what this does? You guys a message. Yeah. What's what's? Do you, do you want to keep going? What's going to happen is. Uh, you can sign up for our app for when we get it on release. We're, it's, we're gonna get an automated email. And uh, once 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 it's ready to put on the App Store, everybody that signed up for it is gonna get a download link and maybe a special feature that uh, we don't actually introduce to everybody else with the re regular app. Maybe some 
premium options, things like that. So you can go to zeroplayer.com, put your name and your email, and send a message if you like, and you can sign up for the app, and you'll get it once it's released. We expect it to be out by early 2016, if not by the end of this year. So. And, uh, Do you have to have an account? No, it's just signing up. You just, uh, you it'll it'll be account. free on the App Store, but it's just a notification in case somebody forgets about it existing or this capstone and how crappy it was or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so there's right. there's this other page here. So this stats. is the uh, this is the live database that we were talking about. So what this does is every song that you play, it will take that information and upload it. So as you can see, song title, album name, artist, the play count. So keep going. Scroll down. Is that huh? <laughs> <laughs> so every song as you can see plays the play count is here. It's ordered by play count, so the most popular songs are at the top of the list. Yeah, so this is a good uh, this is a cool way to see whatever people are playing that are whatever zero player users are playing on their phone so you can see what's the most popular song later we're probably going to add location mm -hmm. so you could see in concord who's playing this song what's the most popular song oh, cool. you could put all that to the music industry too yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. they, would, they would buy that <laughs> yeah. but this that is information that'd be a lot of money actually live right now yeah so right now i'll see let's play some john legend real quick and, and John Legend's not in your database yet, right? Uh, it shouldn't be. It, it probably is because I just played it earlier. What about our volunteers? Yeah, yeah they. We're pull it off, but... So John Legend's playing. You can hear it. He's good singing. So yeah, that's playing right now. Refresh. And... Yeah. So right now it's set at one because we I played it earlier. So click refresh. And it's gonna be moved up to the list. Yep. There so you now go. It's been played two times now. Now it's two because we just played it. And this works seamlessly across all devices. So anybody playing any song, it's gonna upload that play count if it's the same one. You know, it's, it's so just do it. Diego, you're one of our volunteers. Go ahead and Miss Millar, play. What's the name of your song that you're going to play? I'm going to play Inter Sandman by Metallica. Inter Sandman by Metallica. Mm -hmm. uh, mine is Over the Horizon. Alright. So go ahead and play those songs. Basically, what happens is because it's running in that background, that it's not taking away from all the. It's Miss Millar on the Wi Fi. It lags, the database lags behind because it's, be. it's going to be doing all no. that. Time yeah. to yeah, upload we're play. this information and read the information. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be doing it separately from you actually controlling your map, which makes it easier to use. But what is the lag time? It's it's probably like five seconds. Oh, okay. It's not that bad. And it, it's actually because we put it on the background thread, it was it's down from like 20 seconds, 15 seconds to like five seconds because of that. So. All right, I'll right, pause it now. <laughs> 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 that coming. <laughs> All right, so this is the bottom of the list right now. So you said, what was your song? Metallica. Oh, Metallica. Metallica. And Over the Horizon, so refresh. There you go. Yeah. There it is. And it works perfectly with every oh, device. It sounds like the device too. It tells you the device too. Yeah. Samsung. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Well, no, that's the name. Else. No, that's the name of the. Uh, that's the name of the song because that's like uh, a ringtone. Because uh, yeah. so, oh. uh, I do Spotify okay. and do playlists. I don't download music onto my phone. <laughs> 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 yeah, only a few people apparently in the world that doesn't do that. I don't no, I don't put music on my phone either. Uh, <laughs> they're not real music right? people. I have an idea. <laughs> She has an app for that. <laughs> yep, go back. So that's the website. So milestones. 
So you want to talk about that? Yeah. Uh, some of the milestones we completed is uh, our, our main thing that we want to do is we want to get that safe mode feature in it, which is going to define it different from every other media player on the store currently. What we like to describe it as is like a smart player, kind of, because it, it, it knows what, when you're going to start going to speed that's going to be potentially dangerous to anybody who's using it. It's going to change depending on what's going on, but it allows you to keep those same options you want to keep. Media store, uh, what was happening first uh, is we were using a different uh, method to grab the information of songs, and it was pretty inefficient, and it would only go into one folder, so it wouldn't search the entire phone. So media store kind of basically changed the entire way our app worked, and it made it a million times better. It wiped out half the bugs in our entire program and just made everything work much better. These multiple threads, it, it makes the performance go faster and it makes everything just work more smooth. You can skip your songs instantaneously and it'll upload all that information still. Whereas before, it, there was a lag time. It took like five to 10 seconds to actually load the next song and upload it and everything. And we improved the database as well because what was going on first, we had a database that just recorded every song uh, that played and it just kept building the list even if the song existed before it. Oh, mm -hmm. instead of saying it went twice, it yeah. just duplicated yeah, it. Exactly, so it just updated the play now. So we, we went in depth and we changed that as well to make it more efficient and make it uh, a smaller. Basically, if you listen, if previously, if you listen to what we've done here, there'd be 50 of the top song, there'd be like 30 of everything else, and it would, it would take like an hour to load all the information from the database, so it was pretty terrible. And on top of that, uh, it's displaying the metadata on the, on, the, on the database, so the song name, the artist. If you have a song that doesn't have any metadata, that's just unknown, it won't even display it, because that kind of defeats the purpose of the actual database. So before it, it would put everything unknown, blah, 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 so you would have mixed stuff that didn't even have names on it, but with the improved database, all that all that extra clutter is just cut out, yeah. so it doesn't even display. Yes. Does it display the um, album cover? Uh, the database doesn't not at the time. Right we, that's something we we could add. That we we wanted to add. Just we we were focused on getting it done. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Complications. We had huge performance issues. <laughs> I mean, obviously with with. GPS running and the database uploading, reading and writing, along with the song playing. I mean, all that happening on one thread was just, it was ridiculous. I guess it got to the point where on the list view, when you scroll through your, your songs, it would move like this. Like you couldn't even scroll smoothly through the song list. Wow. And uh, visualizers, we were planning on putting like, like as the song's playing, when there's no activity for so, so such amount of time, it would have like a cool visualizer on the screen. We had to scrap that because it was just, it got to the point where it was too hard there was, to implement. There was too much we had to do. <laughs> we, we, were, we just got everything finalized last night, so I mean. <laughs> uh, media issues. Uh, media issues, um, for example, when you, what was happening with that inefficient list display where he was talking about earlier where one list is behind another it, you would click on a song and it would play a different song and then it would show the information of a different one and it, it was just it was all jumbled up and it made no sense so it, and we were going to give we were going to put an option to where you can make a custom playlist but that was really complicated as well because we would have to figure out how to organize all the songs on there into a custom list and then I'll put that to a, a playlist file and write that to the phone and with the 10 weeks that just wasn't yeah. enough time to, to work all that out. So. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys teach yourself Java or, I mean, I know it's very similar to C, but is that something you guys learned uh, here or is that something that you guys did on your own? Oh, we, we learn Java in, in class. Oh, right. We've had oh, okay. uh, a few Java classes, but 
a lot of what you see, it's actually just gained knowledge through the last 10 weeks. Yeah, <laughs> like 90% of this is what we, we learned this just this quarter yeah. on our own, because most of it is research, because for Java, Java programming and Android development, even though they both use Java, it's almost like two completely different things. Wow. Yeah. So it's like, it uses the same language, but the way things are written and it's certain, just, yeah. and certain things that you can import, like it's only on Android stuff, so. Yeah, it just, it made, so basically, yeah, we had to learn everything that we wanted to do. Like there were some simple things that we already knew how to do, just like the logic and things like that. But And sorting by file types, we were gonna try to find a way to kind of organize, like say you have an MP4 video file and then an MKV, kind of organize those and separate them. And also with like songs, separate them by artists so you can have like a more organized uh, file or uh, song list. But it's, that is also a lot of work. So yeah. we. I, w I've, I was dabbling into it the last couple of weeks to see if I could implement it, and there's no set way to actually just sort it by artist or sort it by album. You have to actually create your own entire logic uh, method to make it actually run the way you want to, and you have to make hierarchies. Like, if you click on an artist, it's going to display all the albums. You click on an album, it's going to display all the songs. If it's an album, that's like... That alone would be a lot of complicated work that a lot of code implemented yet. So, and then even after you play the song, it would have to feed that playlist within that album back to the now playing, and it would have to know just to play those songs. So yeah. it's just like every method would, or every uh, class would have to be restructured for that pretty yeah. fast. So, any questions? Are you both of you guys are using the app right now? Yep. Oh, yeah, I, we use it on the way here too. Like I used it yesterday. I mean, and like I said, we're planning on releasing it by early 2016 to the end of this year. So everybody who wants it should sign up on our website to get that whenever we can. <laughs> and so, I mean, send a message if you'd like. Do you, do you have a question, Diego? Uh, do you need an approval by Google to, um, in order to sell the, uh, or to have the app available, or? Yes, you have to have a developer's account and yes. put it out there. Uh, the, the plan is anybody who signs up now is gonna not have to deal with any of the uh, monetizing features that we might add in for it because we wanna add maybe a little ad on the bottom to actually get some revenue from it. You guys will get the premium version so you don't have to deal with those ads. So, so is the premium version going to cost? Yeah, it's going to cost probably a couple dollars. That's, okay. That's the plan. That's the plan. It's 20 bucks. <laughs> okay. No. But, I mean, if you sign up now, you don't have to pay at all. It's free. Yeah, but it's not on Apple. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> if, you still, if you still sign up, you might get the... They're going to be talking to me and about... it's still all about iOS. <laughs> yes. So, is there anything else that you guys have questions about? Or? Yeah, it's really yeah. 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 Yeah.